This week, the odd angry shots kept on ricocheting back and forth between the pro and anti-shooting camps as the debate continued over hunting in the state's national parks. The central argument revolves around the claim that shooters are at heart conservationists and that they're providing a valuable service to this state when they hunt feral animals, making pests of themselves in wilderness areas. It's a notion that's also focused attention on the taxpayer-funded statutory authority that's been promoting that point of view. So are shooters the first in conservation in this state, or is that just self-serving nonsense, as their critics suggest? Nick Grimm reports. The first World National Park was created by a hunter. Hunters need animals to hunt. We are not so stupid as they apparently believe. Are you prepared to do a deal with the ALP to get this bill through? There's nothing like an old-fashioned town hall meeting to get people shooting from the hip. And this week's showdown in Sydney's genteel northern suburbs got folk doing just that. What got them talking was proposed new legislation from the New South Wales Shooters Party. The Game and Feral Animal Control Amendment Bill would give hunters all kinds of new opportunities to enjoy their sport. May I remind you that there's been no less than two federal government inquiries and reports that support and make recommendations supporting the use of hunting and shooting. It's going to be dangerous. My family love going bush. And this is definitely going to exclude all ordinary people. The amendment bill has provisions to enlarge the list of animals earmarked as legitimate game for hunters, to include new exotic species and some native animals. It would also allow for shooting in national parks and see the creation of private game reserves. How can you possibly justify releasing more feral animals? Have you ever been to a private game reserve? Do you know what they are? Yes, I do. OK, they're behind wire. So, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Same, same as a lot of it. Same as... Yeah, forget it. I, I've tried to answer, but obviously they don't want to hear the answer. So. While there was a large contingent of shooters at the meeting this week, they were clearly outgunned by the anti-shooting crowd. The meeting, organised by the Nature Conservation Council, was not surprisingly brimming with greenies. Then there were the locals angry with the New South Wales Shooters Party for helping pass the Labor government's controversial Part 3A planning powers, which a lot of people think has allowed urban development to go feral here and elsewhere in the state. Robert Brown, did you feel like you were venturing into the lion's den tonight? Uh, no, it was uh, pretty much uh, business as usual for me. That's what it's like in the upper house every day of the week. Certainly the Shooters' Party is copping flack at the moment, even from the government, which has until recently been a good friend to the minority party in return, of course, for its support to get its legislation through the state's upper house. That all came unstuck when the Premier declared he wouldn't support the Shooters' Party legislation. Even so, there was widespread wariness at this meeting that the state's two Shooters' Party MPs could still somehow pull off a deal with the government. If the government were to agree to this bill, uh, we would no longer withdraw our, our support for them. Mr Brown is again being deceptive there, and we saw that really clearly, as he said, that he'll vote with the government. Yes, he voted with the government. They stopped voting with the government in June when it became clear that the Labor government wasn't going to support their bill. So if that's not a deal, what is? The Shooters' Party argues that recreational hunters are providing the state with a valuable public service by helping to eradicate feral animals. It's the view currently being promoted in a taxpayer-funded advertising campaign by the New South Wales Game Council, a statutory authority dismissed by its critics as a trophy awarded to the Shooters' Party in return for supporting government legislation. Want to hunt? Join me and help protect our native flora and fauna. Hunters, first in conservation. The advertising campaign features the chairman of the Game Council. Robert Borsak is also chairman of the Shooters' Party and is likely to be one of its political candidates at the next state election. It's about time this government uh, learned that uh, you know, there is a new uh, conservation paradigm in town. The Shooters' Party is prepared to champion that paradigm. And to back up the claim that recreational shooting is conservation, one shooter this week pointed to the North American experience, where certain species of native animals have thrived while still being hunted. Dramatic increases in population since the early 1900s. I mean, that's exactly what hunting can do for conservation. And guess what? We're talking about a native species. Okay? The Canada goose went from 1.1 million to over 3.7 million from the 1900s in population.
Shooters argue it's not in their interest to kill everything that moves, otherwise they'd have nothing left to hunt next time round. But their critics counter by saying that's exactly why they don't make good conservationists in a country with large feral animal populations. Because at the end of the day, they're not really interested in eradicating the animals they like to hunt. Shooters are also blamed for introducing and spreading feral animals like deer. We know, all know that unlike rabbits, deer cannot burrow underneath fences and unlike people, they cannot drive themselves into state forests to establish new populations. Somebody is putting them there. Dr Carol Booth from the Invasive Species Council says recreational hunting is also too piecemeal to have a significant lasting effect on feral animal numbers. Unless hunters are part of an effective feral animal control program, perhaps contributing to a professional program, the killing is futile and it's not conservation. But isn't the only good feral animal a dead one? Well, according to Carol Booth, it's not as simple as that. Unless hunting eliminates more than 50% of feral animals in a target area, their numbers soon bounce back. If you don't kill enough feral animals, then they're qu very quickly replaced by others. Um, with a high reproductive rate, a large proportion of young feral animals don't uh, survive. And so often the hunters will be killing animals that would have died anyway, or they're freeing up resources for other feral animals that otherwise wouldn't have survived. Last week, Environment Minister Carmel Tebbett told Stateline that was one of her chief reasons for rejecting the Shooters' Party bill. Hunters are often looking for trophy hunts. They want to take the biggest animals out. They'll often leave smaller animals or breeding animals because they want to be able to come back next year. The Shadow Environment Minister Catherine Cusack says the Liberal National Coalition also strongly opposes the Shooters' bill. And as is often the case with parliamentary legislation, the devil is in the detail as far as the coalition is concerned. The bill lists cane toads as game for the purposes of hunting. I can't quite imagine the mentality involved in shooting a cane toad, but clearly somebody thinks it would be pleasurable. When the Reese government first lost the support of the Shooters Party back in June, there were unprecedented scenes at State Parliament when Labor contrived to have the upper house shut down early. The doors will be unlocked again when the parliamentary winter break comes to an end next week. Without the shooters, the government won't be able to get legislation passed unless it has the support of the Greens or the Coalition. Treasurer Eric Rusendahl's plan to privatise New South Wales lotteries is just one key policy facing an uncertain future, with the Shooters Party confirming to Stateline this week that it won't water down its legislation. It's all or nothing. You yourself say, though, that the Shooters Party does not believe in preventing the government of the day from governing. But aren't you going to do that? No, I said subject to them continuing to support the interests of our constituents. The minute they turn on our constituents, we turn off our support. It's